What is going on you guys? I'm coming to you with a X-Wing build today and we're doing a uh, Battle of Endor themed build for uh, for the Rebels for X-Wing 2.0 using the new Yet Another Squad Builder 2 uh, up by Rathos. This thing is awesome and I will put a link to this down in the description below. Uh, we're doing a Rebel build and it's going to be Battle of Endor themed so I definitely want to start off with a B-Wing because B-Wings are awesome and I love B-Wings. So uh, one of the things we're going to do is, in this build, we're tr going to try not to duplicate a whole lot of stuff. So, I'm not, as much as I want to run a whole bunch of B-Wings, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it right now. Uh, but I'm going to run 10 Num. 10 Num is new and improved here in uh, 2.0. He's basically got the Kian Farlander's old ability. So, uh, and, but the ship has a built-in ability <clears throat> to go ahead and get stressed because of the the new red maneuvers. I mean, you can do the one Talon roll for crying out loud, but also the barrel roll. Uh, that you can link from a focus, so you can still get your two actions and your stress. Uh, again, it's 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 not exactly the same as having the old school push the limit, but it is still very very cool. Uh, so how are we going to synergize this? Well, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be trying to run ten them with a heavy laser cannon. We're going to try and see if we can manage to put some bad guys in our bullseye arc and take advantage of this new cheaper heavy laser cannon. And uh, if we can manage that, you see, hopefully I'll be using my action for, for repositioning, for barrel rolling. Um, and so I, in, 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 in if I have to, I can focus into the linked you know, barrel roll. I'll have a stress that I can remove. I should have pretty good ability to remove stress with 10 numb as long as I at least have a shot. So for our talent, I want to run Predator. Um, trying to make advantage, you know, take extra advantage of if I have you lined up with the heavy laser cannon, uh, I can reroll an attack die. Um, and even if I'm not using the heavy laser cannon, if I have you at range one, there's a pretty darn good chance I may also have you in my bullseye arc. You have much, have a, it's much easier, if you think about it, to get a bullseye at range one than at range three. Um, now, this may seem a little uh, odd because I think uh, you can make an argument for advanced sensors or collision detector, but I'm going for a fire control system on this one, partly because of the cost. I'm trying to save a few points, but I'm also doing it because if I do end up with a target lock, I can... You know, especially on a tougher ship, uh, like a Ghost or a Decimator or something like that, I can go ahead and just keep that target lock, get extra re-rolls, especially if I manage the shot with the HLC, I'll have two re-rolls, and then I can spend my stress or a focus to, to, to take care of the eyeball results. So I like having the, you know, all the extra built-in re-rolls without having to use actions for that. Um, it's not something that I'll use in every case because if we're lucky and we, you know, blow up, you know, a ship on the first turn, then uh, target lock may be partially wasted there. But I don't think it's necessarily wasted though, because uh, you know, how many times are you, am I going to need to reroll more than like, you know, three or more dice? I'm, I'm hoping not too many. So, uh, and of course, you can always make that decision. You can always just spend your target lock outright. So next up, we're going to go with the A wing. The A-Wing uh, is also featured at the Battle of Endor, and we're going to go with Arvel Krind. Arvel Krind really got a big boost in X-Wing 2.0. Uh, he's still got the ability to attack ships that he's touching with, you know, at range zero, but this, the really nice thing here is that uh, he can boost into ships even if he would overlap. He just treats it as a partially executed maneuver instead. So it's really, really nice. That it, that, and that was like the one problem that he always had in 1.0 is that, it, hey, it's great to be able to shoot somebody that can't shoot you back. But one of the things you could never do before was that you could never um, you know, push yourself into them if you didn't naturally just make it. So now he can totally do that natively. And I think there's no better choice than uh, intimidation for the talent here. Uh, and enemy ship at range zero defends and it rolls one fewer defense dice. Uh, so he wants to be touching those ships. We're totally planning for success here. We're hoping we get this going. Uh, and Intimidation's even better even if we miss, but if somebody else happens to bump us, because Arville's probably going to be right in the thick of everything, uh, right in the middle. Uh, if he doesn't manage to get somebody who's higher pilot skill than him, uh, maybe they'll end up bumping him. He's still, And then Intimidation still applies, even if they bump him from the side. So that's hopefully going to be a really nice thing. Also... We're going to have some synergy to make certain things like uh, Arvel Krind work. And that is the linchpin of this build. And that is going to be a YT-1300 with Lando, who is my Mando, at the helm. Lando is going to be using his new ability 
in the uh, YT-1300 of after you execute a blue maneuver, you can choose a friendly ship at zero to three and they can perform an action. Zero to three is huge, right? You got, that's, that's your full range ruler. You got a ton of room that way. It can even be as range zero, by the way. It can even be somebody you're touching. Um, so if you have accidentally bump into Arvel Krind, and maybe that's something you'll totally do. Maybe you'll fly Lando directly behind Arvel Kryn, but then again, you'd have to fully execute the blue maneuver, so you, you know you probably aren't going to want to bump him. Uh, but maybe you'd do that for maybe just the first turn just to get your spacing right. Who knows? Uh, however you want to do it. But I wouldn't really try to bump all that much, so uh, I kind of misspoke for a second there. Don't want to bump if you don't have to, because you got to fully execute the blue maneuver. But granted... Uh, a, you know, a one maneuver is not that bad. Granted, you're a large base ship, so that's still pretty far, but it's, uh, you know, you've got options there. And considering your range is zero to three, you can be off to the side. You, you don't have to be right in between everybody anymore. So I like that. Um, Lando is, you know, he's got two different things. He can, he can let Arvel go ahead and boost, basically at initiative five. So that's really, really good. Um, but the other cool thing is that he can also let 10 num reposition. If, if, if I've got you lined up with my HLC and you're just a little bit, you know, and I just couldn't quite make it, I can then make 10 num barrel roll if I want. Or if, uh, if I have my focus already and I've got you lined up, uh, 10 num can then take the target lock and then get that built in, you know, uh, FCS reroll if he doesn't need to spend the entire target lock. So, you know, Lando's got a lot of options in this build. So even if I do lose one ship, I don't lose my synergy. Lando can give it to either Arvel or Tendum. So I very much like that. Uh, so what are we going to put on Lando? So first thing I'm going to put is Hotshot Gunner. Since he's going to be shooting first in this build, I want the Hotshot Gunner to kind of soften up the, sh the targets for everybody else, which basically means uh, I'm going to be shooting you after I'm done shooting you, because I'm only shooting with my turret, so it's not like you know every shot basically. Um, after I'm done, you're gonna re you're gonna lose a focus or a calculate token, so you better spend it because you probably won't have anything left, unless of course you were able to stack numerous tokens. But uh, then I'm hopefully that I actually managed to you know to get some damage through if you wanted to save your token, and that's fine with me too if you let me get damage through. Uh, and, and another thing that's good about this is it really allows uh, Lando to do multiple different things. It allows Lando to boost if he needs to boost and not have to worry about, oh, I really need to focus and target lock for this attack. Well, no, because you're gonna draw the you're gonna draw their focus away anyway. Even if you roll all three blanks, you still uh, you still <laughs> you know it's after the modified defense dice step. You still are gonna they're still gonna lose that focus. So even if you whiff. The, the roll, you're still drawing a, a focus away from them, which is great for your first shooter. Next up, uh, I'm going to give him Electronic Baffle. Uh, now, the reason I'm going with Electronic Baffle here is it's just, it's just so much cheaper uh, of a way to effectively give me a white boost. It's not actually a white boost. It's certainly not. But it allows me to get rid of a stress. And so it's actually a little bit more useful than Engine Upgrade. Because Engine Upgrade is really expensive. It's like 9 points on a, on a large base ship. So instead of nine points, I can lose my stress for only two points. Granted, I have to take a damage for that, but that's not really the end of the world on a ship like the Millennium Falcon, where it's got five shields and eight hull. I can take a damage. It's not a critical, you know. So that's that's no problem. Uh, you know, eat up a few shields, no big deal. I have no problem with that because the other thing is that also lets me do a talon roll or a K turn and then still get rid of my stress at the end of the round. So I'm not stuck doing blue maneuvers. Granted, I don't necessarily have a problem doing blue maneuvers because I'm going to probably want to do those anyway. But it really gives me the option in case I do need to turn around. I just like, I think, you know, it's something that I, if I have to do, I'm going to want to be able to do, especially if somebody tries to load me up with stress too. There's not a whole lot of ways to load people up with stress so far, but for two points, it's a really good option that can suit a whole lot of different um, situations. So I'm, I'm kind of digging it. Uh, for our talent, I, I'm going to go with this simple uh, trick shot just because I think um, it's, a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a chance for one whole extra die. Um, and, 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 that, and also, that's, I think that synergizes a little bit with Hot Shot Gunner because uh, even, if, you know, even if somebody is really stacked on, on tokens, they're, they're, gonna, they're more likely going to need to spend that uh, a focus 
if I've got an extra die coming through him, through an obstacle. I, again, Landogel can be flying around the sides of obstacles, point of the turret inside, and just be... He's got a pretty good chance of, of shooting through an obstacle, depending on how you set him up. But the real, the biggest reason is this. It's not a bad upgrade, and it's only one point. I mean, one point for an extra attack die... I, honestly, it's it's hard to go wrong with trick shot. Even if you don't, even if you don't use it at all, it was only one point, you know. And then I mean, I've got crack shot. Chances are, though, my I'm not going to be shooting out the front arc anyway. Um, and then marksmanship, um, again, probably not shooting out the front arc. I think I have a much better chance of shooting out the side through an obstacle. So I think trick shot is clearly the way to go for one point. And that is the list, you guys. So, um, you know, let me know what you think. Have you been using this new squad builder yet? I, I, I have a hard time thinking that, um, you know, FFGs is going to be easier to use because this one is just really, really good. So, if yeah, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think down in the comments below. And uh, don't forget to check out crabock.com and also you can hop in Discord and say hi as well. I've got links to all that down there as well. So, if you, uh, you know, hopefully you like this video, check it out. A big thanks to all my uh, supporters on Patreon. You guys are awesome. And look for the latest giveaway results to be posted very, very soon. So uh, check that out as well. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.